Well, ooh, well, good morning from Sydney. That's early. Yeah. Good That's morning, everyone watching from Sydney. By the way, we are drinking a uh, dry hop saison from Brett Ridley. Which I'm going to. You can kind of. Dry hop just a year ago. Yep, and I will take a picture of the label, but this is like the best label I've seen. Because it actually gives us like all the grain, the hops, the yeast. Second best label. This is the best label right here. Yep. Um, anyways, we got a label printer. Right now, our label printer is set up for uh, five by six inch labels. And so, uh, as a challenge to anybody of you that watch this out in the world, if you want to send me a mock up of a five by six label, I will print it for next week's live stream or two weeks from now live stream. Yeah. Next week, we're probably not live streaming unless I you know, want to live stream while I'm running a 25K. I would not, rec and I'm not live streaming as I'm getting ready for a wedding. <laughs> yeah. Um, other Genius Brewing news are uh, fresh hopped, uh, uh, fresh hopped IPA is on tap right now. We used Idaho Seven and a fresh hop beer, and we did vlog the entire brew day there. So that's going to be a video coming out. Uh, probably won't be for a couple more weeks. And when was our uh, the Black Cascadian going to be? The Black Cascadian is ready to keg. I have it in the walk-in right now. That's ready to keg up. Okay. So we'll have that ready for the next one, unless it gets drank. It did really fast. Jung Hak Yo, thank you so much for the super chat, and good morning to you as well. Um. Yeah. And then. Um, uh, other Knoxville time soon. Stephen Sotomayor, yes, Knoxville time is aiming for January 14th ish, so around that time frame. And then, uh, and also, thank you so much for the super chat. Other big news, uh, yesterday or Friday is either Friday or Saturday. Uh, well, right now, what's happening is the Great American Beer Festival, which is the biggest beer festival in our country, if not one of the biggest beer festivals in the world. Second only to when I throw a party in my backyard. Um, uh, just had their thing, and uh, the awards were announced, and Perry Street won gold medal for Fresh Hot Beer. That's two IPA gold medals that they've won. In, I don't know if it was an IPA, but that's two gold yeah. medals that they won so far, right? Yeah. So they, yeah, so they won IPA last year or two years ago for their juice box? Yeah, I think so. And then uh, I know that uh, for like tree beer or spruce like beer, um, up in Sandpoint, Matchwood Brewing won bronze medal for like their spruce tip brown or something. So we got some uh, some local breweries bringing home some uh, some hardware. That's pretty dope. So, um, yeah. Uh, so we got our fresh hot beer that we brewed on two live streams ago coming out pretty soon too. So we'll be able to taste that on the next live stream. And. Uh, Oh, uh, bagel beer. The video for the bagel beer is close to completion, kind of like me when I drink it. That was a sex <laughs> joke. Yep. Uh, <laughs> anyway, let's... Uh, and then, uh, as a reminder, as we mentioned, no live stream next week. And then the week after, we'll have our good friend Jimmy uh, guesting for me on the 23rd. Yeah. And I think the plan for that is going to be talking about Quake! Yeasts. So, Jimmy, research quike. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about all the quikes and everything quike, quikelyhood. Um, so, yeah. Uh, thank you, Patrick Sandy, for the $5. Hey, I appreciate it, Patrick Sandy. Thank you so much. The, the other ones, I don't call out exactly how much you, you tip because I can't do money conversions. Yeah, no math. Math is for stupids. I, I have to math later today. I don't have to math now. Yeah, math. Yeah, math is. Uh, I just got a degree in math, so like I shouldn't be saying math is bad, but uh, whatever. Um, let's jump into what we're going to talk about today. So we've got two things on the agenda. We're going to uh, work with you guys on holiday beer and f and beer and whatever holidays pair well together. Um, so throw out ideas as they come up. Uh, we'll be writing a blog on that live because I have a blog that I'm supposed to submit tomorrow. So that's something I got to do today. So welcome to my work. <laughs> so we're, we've converted the live stream today to work because I yeah. was. Let's do beer work. <laughs> I was I was running behind this morning. Yeah, he, he was behind. I was like, am I gonna do this myself? Let's just do <laughs> let's just do work in a live stream at the same time. Uh, and then I think that's gonna go well into what we were planning on doing, which is a pastry stout build. Um, so I'm gonna right now on the computer. I'm just getting uh, our softwares up. Um, and it's going to be a birthday cake stout, pastry stout. Birthday cake pastry stout because both of us were born. Yes, uh, which speaking of that. Fun fact. On the 18th, I want you to go to Genus's Instagram and flood uh, one of the posts with just happy birthday, Peter. Better yet, take a half naked picture of yourself and then tag Genus in it saying this is for you. Uh, with a beer. 
I can't solicit that. Yeah, it's a beer photo, beer porn, beer, uh, just a regular beer picture. <laughs> Saved myself. Then no one heard that. <laughs> I, we would not recommend you doing shower beer pictures at all. <laughs> at least not on that website. Uh, all right, let's jump into. Uh, uh, wait, Lisa said no. <laughs> no. Oh, that's probably right. probably the half naked pictures. Oh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and give her a I'm just, give her a beer while she's in the shower and get my own birthday pictures because that's the kind of man I am at least is my wife by the way if you, those of you out there that don't know that um let's go how should I how should I do this you guys want to uh, actually see physical typing because that sounds really cool right? uh Patrick I don't know about sending each other beer but I might organize something in the discord where we are blurry how we, we're not blurry I look you are fine I like sexy. Well, no, I'm look, watching the video there. And yeah, that's pretty good. And that's at 10:48. Um, do you guys want to have? Do you guys want to watch half a screen be? Uh, um, I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah. Half a screen be. Does <laughs> I switch to that? That's not what it's supposed to be. Window capture. Let's go to uh, Chrome. Properties. All right, um, but uh, Patrick Sandy, I I might organize a Secret Santa ingredient thing where everyone proposes a different ingredient, and then you randomly pull. I'll I might figure out something for the holidays around ingredients. Yes, and there we are, boom. Okay, so I'm gonna throw us over on this side like that. Welcome to the back end of how OBS works. Mm -hmm. Perfect, that's pretty good, right? Yeah. Can I cut off part of it? No, it has to stay uniform. Well, that's because you're special. I am very special. I agree with that. Uh, window capture, properties, and that one. Perfect. And then what I might do is go ahead and next that. Oh, don't uh, uh, save. Yeah. Then I can put the window up here. Uh, up here. Now this it's actually a very nice season. <laughs> it's very tasty. Whoever made this, good job. Uh, it was Brett, one of our local homebrewers who That's does. That's right. I knew that. I knew that already. I totally. And just a generally smart. really good guy. And nope, that's wrong. Control Z. That's the nice thing is you can go. I think pretty much all of our local homebrewers are pretty good guys. Yeah, I think so too. All right, how's that look, guys? Except for that Matt guy, that Matt Weiser. I hear he's a jerk. He's a dick. He is. With a huge personality and great heart. Save that one. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, anyways, uh, this is uh, just a screenshot of the last article that I wrote. And what I'm going to do is that I can ask him to save that for a second format it. But beer and holiday pairings. And I'm going to put pastry stat as one of the things that we've got to talk about. Because we're going to hey, build fresh. the pastry sat recipe right here. So I'll kind of go back and forth on that. Um, new beer recipe. Birthday cake. Stout. Perfect. Stout. 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 I keep the W, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely good. All right, so. Uh, oh, let me, let me pull up. I, I don't think there's a BJCP for... I think there is a BJPCP for pastry stout subcategory as a sweet stout. Looking sharp as always. Uh, sweet stout. Uh, I don't. Then there's no pastry stout listed. Or ooh, it might be on the new one. Um, so what are some? Give me some examples of some holiday foods that we can kind of run down uh, and that we can talk about. Uh, Foods or holidays? Holidays, holiday foods. I don't know, holiday themes. Um, kissing under the mistletoe. We can make this a little, a little uh, tongue in cheek. So, what beer goes well with kissing under the mistletoe? It's gonna be a great article, by the way. If you guys want to read it, stay tuned, and we'll show you the links to where the articles go. Uh, we got cranberries, mashed potatoes. Spruce beer. Yeah, I like so. 
under cranberries probably. Bright on bright. Yeah. Mashed potatoes, first of all, these better be garlicky. Uh, Jimmy says winter warmers. Winter warmers. That's uh, one of the beers we're going to talk about, right? We're going to add in there. Yeah, well, I was going to say, uh, that also makes a lot of <coughs> sense for kind of around Christmas and stuff in general. Uh -huh. um, what do you guys think of when you think winter warmers? Because when I think of a winter warmer, I think of like, a deep amber hue, high in alcohol, uh, a little bit higher of a final gravity. So I'm thinking in the like 1.014 as a minimum and all the way up to like 1.022. Which you should make, if you're going to make a wear and warmer, you should make it now. Yeah. So it's, it, it's Give done. Give it time to settle out a little bit. Yeah. And also because it is going to be a higher alcohol beer, um, you do want to give it a little bit more time for that fermentation. Yeah. And then have it settle. Spicy strong ale is what Fresh says. Spicy uh, strong ale. Yeah. yeah, I can think of that. Well, that's what I think of when it comes to wear and warmer, too. Like JW Lee's Harvest Ale, fantastic be beer. S Stefan, I am 100% on board with your comment. A good Bach. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> but that's also what I prefer to drink nowadays is just anything that's German. Which uh, I actually get to, I'm going to go visit in D.C., the brewery that won a gold medal for their Pilsner at GABF. Oh, that's kind of fun. Yeah. So. I'm going to increase my font size so you can actually see what I'm writing. Is that helpful? Uh, yeah, I think so. Looks looks good. And then uh, John, eggnog with brandy. Eggnog with brandy. Has anybody made a egg? Pastry, yeah. Eggnog pastry stout? <laughs> I don't. Google is my friend. I feel like, cause I, I, I know that an eggnog beer has been done before, um, but the, just the uh, uh, logistics of getting that figured out, that'd be really uh, interesting. Brufinity be... Brewing. Brufinity Brewing, if you're listening, send us, send us one. I want to taste it. <laughs> need to dissect it. Uh, but there are, uh, Martha Stewart has a stout eggnog recipe. Oh, that's kind of fun. Yeah, so. Beer and stout kind of bind. Yeah. I think cause we did it. We did an eggnog beer once. We did an eggnog white stat once, and we did it uh, purposely um, breaded so that it would be floaty, and so that we could float it on top of our Count Chocula. I think that was what our what our blend was. We did a light white stout and a big thick dark beer at the same time, so we can float and make little. Um, we've uh, Stefan l last year or the year bef or before COVID, we we actually talked about doing warm beers. Yeah. So we were gonna do a warm beer festival at some point in time. Yeah, uh, new project for Jess, because <laughs> me and you don't have time. Yeah, let's make a warm beer festival. I am now, I'm posting that on the ideas board on Slack. Anxiety, I'm going to put under, that's more of an event, a holiday event. That's what I was going to do. Anxiety. Can. Um, Adderall Paleo, question mark. I don't know. Give me ideas for the anxiety beer. Spicy strong ales. Trogues Independent Brewing is my go-to winter warmer. Nice. Glogger mold warm beer. Yeah. Italian seven fish dinner. Uh, oh, I meant. <laughs> I, uh, so we've talked a lot um, when it came to a warm. Uh, I, I actually we, we've talked about doing like a warm sour mm -hmm. to kind of get that taste of that that grog or the mule wine. Yes. Uh, um, yeah, doing anything that's, that tastes like it has the mulling spices and served a little bit warm. Basically, a giant crock pot beer would be super fun. I'm going to kill you, fly. You're going down. Uh, anxiety Eisenbach. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> the, the beer that we can't legally make here in the United States. Uh, yeah, we can't. <laughs> Unless we partner with a distillery. That's true. Yeah, we could do something like that. My, my dad actually suggested that the other day. He's like, why don't you guys make, uh, like, a Bach and then go to, like, Warrior and have them distill it, like, freeze it down. Yeah, I wonder, yeah, I wonder what the, well, like, logistics of uh, who you'd have to go through in different, uh, um, like, legally, who do you have to go through to make that happen? Because I know that tr anytime you have to transfer alcohol, even if it's going from a breeder to a distillery, um, then are they allowed to package in bulk or what happens after they process it and then distill? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um... 
keep throwing ideas out there. I'm gonna start throwing out some uh, pairings with these. Um, so primary. I also uh, also for like the uh, this uh, set, uh, feast of the seven seas is a traditional Christmas Eve dinner. Uh huh. Um, thing so, which we can yeah you have that for your fish. Yeah. <laughs> that that's where that's where uh, Peter would make a uh, seven different fish beers. Hell yeah. With, for each course. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> Uh, Spice right. doppelbock. Ooh, I like that. So prime rib, big fatty piece of meat. You need something to cut through that. Uh, I would on this one. I'd probably prefer some variation on IPA, and it'd be something bright with the IPA. So it'd be a lighter body IPA with something like spruce or something yeah. like a, uh, I don't know, ginger I, or something like that. I think our showmas would do like a a rye IPA. Yeah, yeah, a little rye IPA. Uh, Actually, like, a little bit more aggression. So it's yeah. got that natural spice to it. Yeah. Well, and yeah. So I would I would do a rye IPA for the uh, a prime rib. Um, just because you don't want to go so, in my opinion, so bright, you want a little bit of body to yeah. it still. You still, and rye, rye, you can get that nice brightness with having that little bit of viscous body. Yeah, it's going to give it a little bit of the, the protein matrix too. So that's, yeah, that's a good point. So that way I can you want it to have some, some sort of a, uh, some sort of a, uh, body to it so that it's not like just super dry and it's like contrasting with the prime rib but you also definitely have to have something that's going to help cut it same kind of concept as putting horseradish on your prime rib you need something that's going to be a little bit more like zingy on the tongue um, um and we do not have pumpkin anywhere in stuff yet <laughs> no we should put pumpkin pie as a pairing mashed potatoes i'm gonna put pumpkin pie under uh under the mashed potatoes mm -hmm. um I'm more of a pecan pie fan myself. But then I'm gonna put pumpkin beer in quotations under the mashed potatoes. Dang it, formatting. Because some of you guys know that we like to make our pumpkin beer different than pumpkin spiced beer that everybody else makes. Yep. Ice is doing stuff. Do you know how to format Word better than I know how to format Word? Because I, I, I'm terrible at this. Uh, I'm actually, I'm halfway decent, but I, it's also not my job. That's true. Mashed potatoes. I need the garlicky AF comic to be up here. Big garlicky mashed potatoes. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that, even though I do love garlic, but I'm a very much more traditional mashed potato guy. I can't do it. I need like butter and garlic. I need my mashed potatoes to like melt in my mouth. Well, we do a lot of <coughs> butter and then we also make a, a super good gravy. Mm -hmm. So that's where we get all of our flavor from at my house. Thanksgiving's my big holiday and I might, I'll probably post some pictures of the like case and a half worth of beer I take to Thanksgiving alone. <laughs> I spelled potato wrong. Yeah. There's no E. Perfect. Okay, got it. Um, what I know. What's the know, beer Patrick. that goes well with mashed potatoes? Um, they're big, they're starchy. If you do them right, they're buttery and garlicky, so they're a little bit fatty, but they're also a little bit funky. I actually I feel like it's like got to be a brown. I actually like the idea of like a nutty brown, the okay. kind of counter like. I was gonna say. I was gonna oh, say saison. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say saison or farmhouse. Yeah, saying like. So it kind of depends on if you got a, or a, a sweet palate or a, a sharp palate, but yeah. Actually, a brown saison might be like a darker saison. Oh, that sounds amazing! Southern Germany, they do a lot of duck roast with red cabbage. Duck roast with red cabbage? Mm -hmm. That sounds amazing. I put that under turkey. I'm gonna put that over turkey because turkey's kind of a shitty bird. Uh, and uh, dime. Uh. In November, we're going to talk about um, one of the things I am going to say is uh, doing cookie beers because I have done a bunch of cookie beers. Yeah. So that is going to actually be a topic is how to do cookie beers. Um, so you're on the right track. <laughs> I think that's an obvious uh, mm -hmm. for a kissing under the mistletoe pairing. Yeah. For those of you at home that are listening instead of watching this, uh, I just typed something that was really awesome. <laughs> lol, 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 lol. Uh, this I actually would say a lot of like the light logger, like loggers and stuff. Um, I agree with that. Pilsners, uh, Hells. Um, a 
maybe a Kolsch for a little bit extra oomph. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anything in the light world. And I then think uh, well a session IPA in there as well. Because you, you have seven courses. It's true. You <laughs> Slightly more. <laughs> Slash barley wine. Um, yeah, no, I like that, yeah. Any of the light lagers. I also, because uh, Italian seven fish dinner, that usually comes with tomato sauce, right? Or some sort of a tomato-y thing. Confit, is that a thing? Let me know if I'm off yeah. on this. Uh, Marshmallow with ooh, the sweet si ooh, cider. Ooh, cider. We can include cider with the, uh, with the uh, seven, seven fish with that, that brightness. Yeah. I also think cider could go well with the duck roast with red cabbage, depending on how it's done. Yeah. Like a classic, like English hard cider, or uh, a nice dry mead. Mm -hmm. Or a dry mead. Um, uh, yeah. Patrick, I'm huge into any type of pilsner. You have me a pilsner. English IPA, the same as toothpaste. Northern Brewer hops. It's minty. Pretty close. All right, so so far what we've got, we've got kissing under the mistletoe. That goes with the Colgate Berliner Weiss, obviously. Uh, for an holiday anxiety, you've got uh, Eisbach um, or an Adderall Pale Ale. Should we uh, include Eisbach with Prozac? I don't know. I have no idea what Prozac is, actually. Um, Prime As we've someone who works in the health <laughs> insurance industry, I'm going to recommend that you do not mix your <laughs> mental health medications with alcohol. I am not a doctor, but I've heard that is not appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Prime Rib, we've got... Um, the Rye IPA um, with some sort of maybe a brightening agent. Ginger, spruce. Uh, well, let me know if you've got... Or like a nice IPA. citrusy. Something citrusy, yeah. Like, a citrus rye? Yeah, citrus, lemon, orange, something like that. Something to brighten it up because you need some a little bit of uh, aggression to kind of cut through all the fattiness of the prime rib. Yeah. Uh, Italian seven fish dinner, we went pretty much all on the light side. Um, uh, light lagers actually pair well with anything with tomato sauce. Correct me if I'm wrong, if, that doesn't, if Italian seven fish dinner doesn't have you know, a tomato base to it. They, 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 well, I, one of the dishes might, but it's a lot of just like, like shrimp scampi is I hear is like one of them. It oh, depends. Yeah. yeah. It's depends on who's making it. But well, my if, we're house, not, if we're not breaking it down, we're just going to say, Hey, drink everything light with the Italian, the Italian seven fish dinner. Mm -hmm. Um, duck roast with red cabbage, um, hard cider, uh, like an English style hard cider or a dry mead. Um, and the uh, in the beer world, that'd probably still go along with like anything on the lighter side. Um, but but saying dry, you want saying not kind of nice and dry. Yeah. Uh, turkey. What do you guys think goes with turkey? Turkey's such a bland meat unless it's cooked really, really well. But if it's cooked really well, usually it's got some other flavor to it, like smoke or deep fry fat or something like that. But turkey by itself, that one's really hard. Should we separate that out? Deep fried versus smoked. What's what's another good way to make a turkey? I mean, everyone uh, we, just oven uh, cooks with basting, right? Well, yeah, we, we oven, that's, uh, we, for my house, we baste the chicken for, like, two straight days. <laughs> Low and slow. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually splatchcock the turkey. Yeah, that's, that's good. Um, if you don't splatchcock your turkey, then it's really hard to get an even co cook all the way through, and it's also really hard to get flavor in the middle of the turkey because it's such a large bird. Do you mean like stop? We did do a very, I think it was a four year old bottle of uh, Rogue's Brown Ale as kind of a basing for the turkey one yeah. year. I kind of like, I kind of like Brown Ale as like a general um, yeah. answer to the turkey, you know, pairing. Uh, I was going to say Brown oil. Rogan um, is also good. Yeah, that sounds really good. Um, or I was thinking any, a nice smoked amber. Smoked amber. For any of them, actually. Yeah. I don't think we need to break it down. I think those are just the, the, in my opinion, the best beer choices. Yeah, you've got that good medium body, and then something that's gonna just make it a little sharper. So Brown Ale's got the roast malt to make it a little sharper. The Rogan has the, the Rogan rye. beer's got the rye. The Amber's got the smoke. Yeah, something a little bit sharp that kind of a red ale turns that a nice red ale. Red ale with spicy hops. Yeah. Hops to the mix. And the, um, uh, actually, mostly because I feel we're out of season, but a uh, Martin. Yeah. Because that'll have that nice. October feast. Uh, hey, Stefan, real quick, since you, you're in Germany, do you prefer Fest beers or Martin? Since I know those are two different beers now. Also, send me one. Run now. Ham. 
Speaking of beer, what's uh, next? Here, you, you figure out the ham dilemma, and then I'll find another beer for us. Uh, Daniel, I'll actually take one of the wee heavies I have at my house, or barley wines at my house to... Okay, <laughs> Stefan says he prefers Martzen's. <laughs> uh, but ham, ham. I always associate... Honey Blonde. I have a bottle of Naomi. Oh, perfect. There's that. I'm going to rinse these two off for reasons. Yep. Honey Blonde, I like that idea. Because uh, it's you almost always have a honey or a glazed ham, especially for the holidays. Yeah. So you want something sweet but not overly sweet. So, uh, Travis, if you're watching, we're going to open up... Your thing, um, your beer, it is a Brett Saison. Oh, this is one I've been looking forward to. Every and every beer we try is going to have something to do with bread. The first one's made by bread, the second one's made with bread. Uh, okay, so sorry. Uh, Hells for the ham. Okay, I like, I do like a Hells as well. Yeah, slightly more multi sweet. So something with. Basically, we're thinking light, but with some malt body to it, or something sweet component. That's kind of what it sounds like. Uh, cream ale. Yeah. And then... Uh, doubles and quads are missing. Those might be for desserts. Those are more dessert beers, in my opinion. They're more, I mean, they're, stand, they're standalone. So uh, d doubles or quads, I totally think go with the holidays, but in terms of what they, what beer they go with, I could see a quad with the cranberries, actually. That's kind of two different. I'm going to let you open this because it's a Brett beer. I will open it, not over the fireplace. <laughs> oh, you have bottle opener over there, don't you? Probably. Uh, yes, you do. Yes, uh, in the stickers, in the stickers. I found it. Scissors. Okay, I'm just stopping and watching Peter. Oh, nice. It, it didn't explode. Sorry, because it was a Brett beer, I was afraid that it had kept going. It's got some carbonation to it, so you can see the bubbles starting to come up. Start with a little little rinsey poo. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> we all have the same reaction, like, oh, sweet color. So those of you, it is a very, that's a rosy pink. Yeah, that's a fun color. Um, so this was a spontaneous ceremony with uh, great Pompeii's. Oh, okay. So it's 30% pills, 30% Vienna. Our first reaction is mostly going to be the rinse reaction, so we're still just getting the other beer out of the way and getting our palate primed and ready to taste it for realsies. Wow, it was racked onto four, and a half, uh, four pounds slash gallons of... That's nice. Of pomade? That, that was uh, spontaneously fermented. Oh, interesting. Is that the uh, those giant uh, grapefruit-looking things? Yeah. Nice. Um, Honey Blonde Hellas Cream Ale. I like that for the ham. Uh, I like it if we're going like, especially if we're going like the baked ham style. If you want smoked ham, obviously that go towards a little bit different flavors. You might go back to. Uh, someone suggests a rice, like a rice lager. Okay, I can see that. By the way, my strategy for actually writing this article uh, is going to be I'm, I'm literally going to talk about how we came up with all these pairings mm -hmm. on, on a live stream. So the concept of the live stream is going to be in the article. I think that'll be a fun, yeah, fun way for people to react to it. Rice lager. All right, cranberries. We have spruce beer. I would also I'm say see that. This letter because it's a nice little. Oh, cute. Handwritten and stuff. So. <laughs> I don't know why cute was my response. Cute's not the right response. So Travis, uh, <laughs> Travis Martia, uh, thank you so much. Uh, greatly appreciate. This is a really good beer. Like I haven't uh, even gotten into the me the meat of it, but it's really good. Like thank I can you. tell, like already by the taste of the even the rinse. Um, cranberry sprints. I actually might do the dunkel with the cranberries. Uh, oh, dunkel. Yeah. yeah. So you, I think the the way in my mind, the way I'm thinking of it is, it's either spruce beer because it's very specifically, like the natural mintiness and brightness kind of pairs with the cranberry, but not a lot of other bright things would pair with cranberries because it's kind of like bitter on bitter. So I like the idea of a, uh, uh, you know, sweet, especially sweet from esterification. Like beer certification being the pair with cranberries. So is this a Dunkelbach we're talking or a Dunkelbison? I was assuming bison. Yeah, okay. 
I, I like Dunkel Bison a little bit better because that actually adds that little bit of body. Yeah, well, and the uh, and the the bananas, cranberries uh, and uh, ho ho hogan beer. I don't know what that beer is. Stefan, explain your Germanness. <laughs> I'm also googling it because I have Google. I am too lazy to do that. See a dime. Oh, we need a suggestion for bean casserole. That's awesome. We do need bean casserole. Oh, it's a honey beer. Oh, okay. It? Yeah. Um, here we go. Of course, it takes me to the German page. I can't read that. Who? <laughs> uh, oh. That kind of makes sense. It kind of sounds exactly like honey, honey beer. Honey beer. Honey beer. Let me know if my German accent was good. Uh, uh, all right, so pumpkin pie. I don't have a lot else to go with pumpkin pie other than just like marshmallow vodka. Um, Actually, I think you see coffee beer going really well with uh, anything coffee related. Oh, yeah, no, uh, a nice like uh, coffee stout. Coffee stout, or even something like we have, which is a coffee uh, spars beer. Yeah. I'm keeping the cue in there. Spars beer. Uh, especially if you're like me, where your pumpkin pie ends up being like more whipped cream than it is actually pumpkin pie. That I can see that being good. Why is bean casserole indented? Because you're special. Don't mock my ability to format things. <laughs> um. Uh, what do you guys got for Ooh, pumpkin pie English or the bean porter. casserole? English porter. Oh yeah, I like that. Something that's you know got that natural malty sweetness and that natural. Yeah. yeah. Because pumpkin pie is a dessert, so you want a little bit of it, like almost a dessert beer without being too heavy. Yeah. Schwartz beer, Peter. Schwartz. Oh. Stefan's correcting my spelling, so I gotta fix it. <laughs> I know how to spell in German. <laughs> Um, green bean cat. Well, and I think this goes along with the uh, John's question with green bean is like also for me because green bean is it's kind of like the the mix of everything. Yeah. Well, you've got you know you've got your uh, you know what's it called the mushroom soup or whatever classic green bean casserole, which is basically just green beans, cream of mushroom, and cheese, right? I think so. I don't ever eat. We don't have green bean casserole at my house. Then you don't have a white family. No, I have a family of my grandfather could have opened a very well k good kitchen on just Chinese food, <laughs> <laughs> and he is white. <laughs> you are a, you're, you're a lucky duck. Uh, green bean casserole. It's it's never bad. It's just it's, it's never <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> it's just what it is. What it is. You're like yeah, I can always eat some green bean casserole. <laughs> um, I was gonna say my Thanksgiving is always mashed potatoes turkey rolls uh stuffing cranberry sauce and lots of gravy i like it with the green beans stein beer stein beer for any dish with beans oh i like that yeah i like that yeah i need i, I, I need something with for a, i could see ipa i was gonna say i feel like something with hops but as long as it's not like a hazy uh no uh, just a a good west coast ipa yeah Them New England nurse can keep their IPA. That's right. Yeah, I, is or there I was say, or do we just uh, throw in the random milkshake <laughs> IPA for? <laughs> is there is there anything that like a hazy IPA pairs with? It's just kind of like that's it's kind of a standalone thing in my mind. Mm -hmm. I think uh, for me, a hazy IPA is like your warm up to Thanksgiving yeah. dinner, pre gaming. That that's how you deal with your your annoying relatives. Is a nice big boozy hazy IPA. That's right. We'll put that under under the holiday anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll put that on the top. Pre game with hazy IPA. Also make you a little sleepy, you know, because hops. Yeah. All right, so Stein beer, West Coast IPA for bean casserole. Do we have any other suggestions I think that's on that? Slap chips. Uh, 
Okay, so traditionally Christmas wow, dinner. Okay. So my family's weird because we don't. Well, we just do a we just do steak because we're simple at my house for Christmas dinner. Um, what I was gonna say, I think traditional is like either a roast or a ham on Christmas day. Uh -huh. Oh, hazy with, with mango glazed kebabs. That sounds like a great summer beer. Uh, but Stefan, yeah, a lot of it's like, or like a, or, yeah, I would say uh, either ham or uh, a, a roast of some pork roast or a beef roast. For what you eat with Christmas? Christmas dinner. So whenever we go down to my wife's family, which is, that's the tradition usually Thanksgiving's with my family and Christmas is with my wife's family. They have a tradition of doing a uh, king crab leg dinner. Um, which I always appreciate because king crab legs are very expensive but also very tasty, so. Yeah, um, but I'm, I'm thinking very <laughs> traditional, like, a lot of people do that, um, um I think Christmas Eve cake. is the big, the big dinner and then Christmas Day is not as big a dinner in, in the most American families. Uh, yeah, Christmas Day is usually like, hey, let's go out and do things, and Christmas Eve is like, that's when the dinner happens. Yeah. Christmas uh, cri By Christmas Day, all the getting way too drunk and then waking up hang hungover and having to do presents early in the morning is what happens. And then we're like, oh, I either need to like go back to sleep or like go out and do something. Like you can't Or just drink really more beer. Around. That's what I do. It's true, but that's, that, that goes right into the go, go back to sleep. <laughs> what does uh, fruitcake taste like, by the way? Fruitcake, so we got the fruitcake uh, from Diamond Roads 8204. Fruitcake's like, what is it? What does it taste like? It tastes like coffee cake, right? But with like fruit in it. Uh, it's like a, th it's no, it doesn't taste quite like coffee. It's like a, it's a very sweet cake. Um, it's almost like a, like a rum, like I would say, like it's like, have you had rum cake before? Maybe. So like that kind of almost like bourbony sweetness, but like with all the fruit, and it's a very dense, heavy cake. Where's my wife when I need her to know what things taste like? Fruitcake with, uh, I don't know, shots of tequila. Or that too bad. <laughs> I was too excited. Bread. Um, well, we can put kvass. <laughs> I have no idea what fruitcake tastes like. That's a hard one to try to pair. Yeah, um, honestly, that actually... That's that's your sours. I can see that, yeah. All the fruited, like good fruited sours. Yeah, a, a nice a kettle fruited sour or a lambic. Just because you want that brightness to come through, and that, boise. and like that tartness to help cut through the denseness of the fruit cake. I like it. Happy <laughs> fruit cake. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, yeah, a nice bready. Or a nice uh, clovey banana half. Half as cool. All right, I think we got enough uh, enough content on the holiday beer pairings. On the holiday beer pairing slash right. Creek. Oh, yeah. Creek. Yep. But yeah, Flam Boys is right better. All right, we'll keep that. Let's uh, let's design a let's design a birthday cake beer for me and Peter's birthdays. If you guys don't know. Um, I turn uh, 18 on next week, uh, I don't know, nine days from now on the 18th, and he turns 21 on the 17th. 17th. So both of us will be legal in one sense or the other. Take advantage of that as you wish, and let's make a birthday cake stout. I know how old your, old, your oldest is. That scares me yeah. if you're turning 18. That's right. Yeah, I pushed that one out when I was really young. Tweet. Um, how do we want to make the, what, what kind of birthday cake are we, are we trying to go for? You guys say in the comments what kind of birthday cake stout so are we going to or do beer the, we should make. So we do we need to do a, a, like of like certain flavored or do we do the classic like funfetti birthday cake, which I can't. If we do funfetti into it, I can't drink it. I don't know if funfetti is classic, but I think I always think a birthday cake is like whatever kind of cake you want. Yeah, like it could be vanilla cake, it could be cupcakes, it could be. I'm always a big chocolate cake fan. Chocolate cake. Uh, it could be a German chocolate cake. 
That could be a uh, red velvet. Let's not do velvet. that because currently no drought has that on. <laughs> yeah, I think we could just do it that much better. <laughs> uh, Coming for you, Damon. Carrot cake. Carrot cake. That's an interesting one. Pie is greater than cake. 3.1 for 159265 something 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 is better than cake. I agree. Fudgy the whale stout. Is that a thing? That's probably a, that an actual stout out there. I'm going to do some, some Google flying. Fudgy the whale stout. Cake. Cake stout? I don't know. Hey, it is. Fudgy the whale. Cute. I want it. Nordic track? I don't like you anymore. Let them drink cake. How Carvel sweetened Father's Day. Oh, that's kind of cool. I'll have to read that later. Unless you guys want to read it now. We can dive into Fudgy the Whale. Fudgy the Beer. A whale of collaborations. No, obviously you said... Dang it. <laughs> they know. They're on to me. <laughs> Captain Lawrence Brinko and Caraval Ice Cream have tagged Fudgy the Whale. 6% limited edition. Roasty Fudge collaboration. That sounds fun. Find the beer. Oh, uh, so Stefan, a traditional... Um, it's whatever candy you get on uh, Christmas is usually what uh, for dessert. Um, at my house, we do. My mom does a triple chocolate cake or a triple chocolate mousse. Dessert Christmas dessert. Yeah, what's the traditional? What, what does your family typically do? Uh, when I was a kid, what we did was we made sugar cookies and like the simplest, easiest frosting possible because that's what we knew how to make. And uh, we decorated a bunch of cookies. They were not very good because we weren't very good at baking or making frosting, but uh, it was fun to do. And we'd always like clear out our entire kitchen table and then like, you know, powdered sugar slash flour the entire thing or whatever. And then we'd roll out giant sheets of cookies and just make and decorate cookies. Uh, so we got black forest cake is one of the suggestions. Ooh, black forest cake sounds pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Raspberry German chocolate cake. Let's do the German chocolate cake idea. Let's but take it one quick. step further. Uh, As you probably hear the sirens. Peter burnt down a place and they just figured it out. It's all right. My fingerprints aren't there anymore. They'll never know. Uh, Black Forest or Black Forest cake is a chocolate sponge cake made with rich cherry filling base. Uh, on the German dessert Schwarzdaler. Stefan, how do you pronounce that? Um, literally, mm. Jack Black Forest cherry tor torta. So it's like a sponge cake, but it's chocolate with cherries. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. That'd be good. I like that idea. All right, we're making a Black Forest cake beer. All right. Oh, so it's just the name of it's the traditional name of uh, a Black Forest cake. Oh. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah. Sweet. All right. How uh, do we make this thing? So. Vote in the comments what our base mall should be. They're going that way, but one I don't know. I'm getting confused by fire trucks. Options are Marisada, Halcyon, Pearl, Heidelberg, Pilsen, Pale, Pale uh, since, Ale. Since it is based in row. Germany, I would say Heidelberg. Heidi? I, I like I like a good base of Heidi on that. A nice German malt. What ABV are we going for? How drunk do we want to be on our birthdays? <laughs> oh, Jimmy says Chevalier. That's also a oh, good idea. Do a Pale Ale <laughs> version of it? Ooh, a, a, a white Black Forest chocolate thing? It's possible. Chocolate extract is pretty strong. Hmm. Let's split it. Let's do half Heidi, half Chevalier. Okay. Um, I'm just going to start with six of each. Eight. Wow. You must have really messed up those people over there. They had it coming. Their fault. It's going, are we just going to start singing the Chicago song, They Had It Coming? I have no idea what that is. Oh, yeah. You don't listen to as many musicals as I do. I probably have more musicals memorized than you, but that's the ones that I got like super into when I was in musical theater in college. But it's not the breadth. I probably have the depth, not the breadth. Yeah. Um, that's my playlist when I'm not listening to beer podcasts in the car is usually <clears throat> musical. <laughs> I had a couple of those that uh, fit. All right, how do we want to build this mill? Sweet metal, dry metal. I'm, I'm normally a fan of dry metals, but... Uh, yeah. 
Let's see what people say. 8%, go, go, go. Well, and I was going to say, being a pastry stout, we're going to get that sweetness other places. Yeah, that's true. So we really could air, air on the side of dry. Yeah. Uh, and Stefan suggested 8%. Easy. That's light work, bruh. Light work. Given the fact that about five blocks down the road, there's a brewery that has a 20% beer on. Uh, zoom in so you guys can see what we're doing. Does that make it better? Is this helpful? Do you guys like having the screen on the side or do you like just uh, looking at our faces instead? Hopefully this is helpful. My face isn't that pretty. Yeah, let's go lower of something. I like aromatic malt. Let's yeah. go... Uh, do they have the Franco Belgis one? Franco Special Aromatic. That's the one I like. Do you have that? Hell yeah, I have that. Do I have my favorite aromatic malt of all time? Are you kidding me? Of course I have that. That's easy. Pale chocolate malt, chocolate rye, chocolate wheat. All right. Um, pa so, pale chocolate. We can probably go with a decent amount of pale chocolate if we want that chocolate flavor. Yeah. Pale. And I, and I actually don't mind the chocolate wheat to help chocolate. with the body some. Yeah. Chocolate wheat. Because in my opinion, any... Um, 0.5 maybe? Chocolate wheat? Yeah. Uh, any... Uh, I believe that's the one that we have. Yeah, it is because that's the one we used at Jimmy's Brew. Chocolate rye. German chocolate rye. Bump. So, uh, and so what's our, what would our AVB be with this? So right now, uh, if we're at 75% uh, efficiency, and it's going to be adjusted to our attenuation. So right now, this is with a finished gravity of 1.019. I almost never do that, and so if we just, it doesn't let me adjust my attenuation, maybe it does. Attenuation, let's just say 78% attenuation, and that puts us at 7.88. Nice and dark. We still need to go a little bit higher. Let's say we're going to add some, I don't know if it's going to go in there, but we can add it as if we are cherry juice cherry dark sweet much much immersed fisher we're just gonna say we'll say dark sweet cherries they're not dark sweet cherries we're gonna use a sour cherry mm -hmm. two pounds of that uh of that. did we add acidic malt uh we did not add acidic, acidic malt we should probably add our a little bit of acidulated uh why what's the for the i don't know don't you always add a little bit of acidulated uh, it kind of depends. So on this one, the with this amount, because we got like one, we got almost two pounds of dark malt, so we're gonna get a lot of acidity out of the dark malts. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we, I don't think we need it. Um, if we yeah. if we end up brewing it here, I know our water is super neutral, so we have. Okay. Um, unlike other places, we don't have very alkaline water, so acidulated malt probably doesn't need to go on this one. Not that it would hurt anything, but I'm just liking this beer already. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like right up my alley. A couple pounds of dark sweet cherries. Sitting at 8.13, given the same attenuation. Um, hops, I have no idea on the hops. What'd you put in where we were doing for the yeast? Darkness. Darkness would be good. Darkness would probably fit along the side that uh, attenuation too. And my, I'm probably, like, <laughs> probably messing with people's eyes, scrolling around this much too. Um, uh, yeah, darkness or like or a neutral one like house, either one. I just I really like darkness for dark beers. Yeah, if we do I'm actually that, like it for we'll IPAs too. I've done I've done darkness and attenuation at 78. percent That, by the way, the attenuation combination of the fact that there's going to be simple sugars from the cherries and the fact that how I mash, uh, we might there's a chance we'll overshoot that that 78 uh, percent attenuation. But that's what we'll go for. Um, and then we we'll have just a bigger beer. Yeah, if if we overshoot it, then we'll go more alcohol. But fermentation temp. Um, probably 68 ish, somewhere around that range. Mm -hmm. Starter, of course, we do a starter. And then, um, <clears throat> we got Ariana, Orbelma, Willamette, Balming Cross, Brambling Cross mm -hmm. as Ariana, options. Orbelma. Uh, Ariana actually is not too bad an idea because it has some of those berry notes. Yeah, I don't mind that. Let's do, uh, let's do three ounces, it's like a little bit late, like, uh, Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. Eight minutes. See how much that gives us. If yeah. we want to try to get some flavor. 
yeah without being super flavorful we're probably going to get more just because if we're going through a counterflow chiller it's going to be um it's going to be sitting there a little bit longer mm -hmm. so that's probably undershot but with that big of a beer with that big of speediness 33 ibus is pretty low yeah that's and especially since we're probably gonna add a little bit of lactose in there yeah let's see that how much lactose do you guys think out there four pounds one pound half pound this is in a five gallon batch so one pound's kind of like the middle of the road two pounds is like pretty lactosey sweet quarter of a pound is like just enough to kind of feel it in your mouth but not enough to like really taste it whatever the one point jimmy says 1.25 Pounds of lactose. Patrick says 1.5. So we've got people in the same in the same range. Yeah. So the 1.25 per. So we're going with that, and that shouldn't affect our alcohol at all. Joie. This is actually a beer I would take my dad because <laughs> he likes cherries. It is tasty. Water chemistry. I'm just gonna type up a quick. Profile. Um, all right. We got ourselves a, a beer. All right, what are we making this? Uh, this might be a non live stream make just because we're both busy in the next live stream you 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 have kvike to talk yeah. about well he, how about this i've got two options one is we make this um off the live stream i don't know why that's oh, i don't know why and the other option is um I'll throw us up here and, and yes move yes us back over yes we did forget lobster beer in the lobster beer's gotta go yeah so lobster beer is obviously going with the crabs Mr. Krabs. Uh, the other option is if there's somebody in Spokane who wants to make this for us, I will front the cost of all the ingredients. I will donate the ingredients if someone wants to brew this for us, and then we can drink it on a future live stream. Sounds good? Let me know. If we've got any takers, then I will make that happen. If we don't have any takers, then we'll make it in, uh, in our own uh, time in between live streams. But since we're not going to be brewing, or we're not going to be here next week, then... Uh, we're not gonna do that. And also, uh, I I do want to get into the uh, state beers as soon as possible because that's yeah that's gotta, that's, that's a lot of beer. <laughs> yeah, that should be our 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 focus. Also, it wouldn't be a wouldn't be a terrible idea if we had some some local guys want to help out with some of those too. I think that'd be fun to incorporate local people that want to help brew some of those. So yep. many projects. Ah, we got the lobster. Dang it. Yep. Uh, yeah, and we do have a lot of projects. Um, Just for fun, we should throw a lobster in a birthday cake beer. <laughs> Obviously. Why not? <laughs> as long as I can eat the lobster afterwards. Uh, exactly. Oh, man. With I did, all I that did, big I, chocolate I, I, sweetness I did tell in? Spencer the next time you guys can do a lobster beer, make sure that he's here for that day. Oh, yeah. And he's like, why? I was like, it's the best lobster you'll ever eat. He's it's like, okay. It's so good. Uh, Black Forest is just one hour drive away from the... Bodeneza, <laughs> huge lake. So, combination of black forest cake and lobster isn't too far fetched. Oh. Hey, hey, Musty, uh, will post the Peter will send me the recipe, or Peter will post the recipe in uh, the Discord, and yeah. you can still brew it. Yeah, if you're not too far away and want to pay for the shipping, I'll still pay for the ingredients. And I'll just ship it to you. Oyster stout too. Yeah. Oyster stout. Oh yeah. Yep. Um, also, since you guys are kind of talkative. Um, and no one, I don't think anyone did my upvotes. Fried green tomato or pecan or pecan? Pecan. It's so, pronounced pecan. So those are your two options. Uh, I can't do, I could maybe. Yeah, you got to vote for our first state beer. Uh, Which would, is Alabama. Would that be a good, would it be a good idea for us to do a, like a weekly live stream for people in America, or if, if, I guess people foreign if they want to pay for the shipping, which would be hard. Uh, for people that are within shipping distance, would it be a good weekly thing to do to do a, a weekly recipe giveaway if people are willing to front the shipping costs? And then it, they can they can donate to our uh, our efforts to make all the beers that we think about in the world. Uh, the Lobster Poi Boy beer might be at one of our southern 
Lobster po' boy. Oh yeah. That that seems like a very southern beer. Louisiana or well, Mississippi? Well, Louisiana, we're, we have to do we have to do crawdads. And yeah, we got to do crawfish. We need a little more. This is such. Thank you so much, Travis. This is Travis. This beer is great. We I, appreciate it a lot. I I just want more of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, pecan like wrath of Khan. Pecan. Pecan, pecan like wrath of Khan. Um. It. So is that your so? Please, please quickly type in what you want. Is a fried green tomato beer or a pecan beer? Uh, Warren has already voted uh, pecan. Okay, pecan. Yep. Um, because I figured, ask the other brewer here <laughs> <laughs> what his opinions are. That is fair. Yeah, so especially for... since he also does like some of the weird beers, he just felt tomato is a little bit too. Yeah. Even though uh, Thomas has done a tomato beer, yeah, it tastes pretty good. Yeah, it was that was really that beer festival. He had a one really good beer, and one beer that tasted like absolute garbage. That was this hopless IPA. Oh yeah, you did you try that? I did. I was pouring beer for Cameron at the time, and I tried it, and then I was just trying to clean my palate at the time while pouring beer. That happens. Hey, you know what? Shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you you might fall all the way back down to earth and suck. So we got Patrick saying fry green. And actually, I'm gonna to go to the see if people actually voted on my post Th that I did late. Thomas is fun because he like he's willing to make those big leaps of faith, trying to make some really really strange beers. I think him and I have kind of a similar mindset that than that, but his is like more focused on the historical aspect of the beers he makes, and mine's kind of focused on just like whatever in the world. Last week, let's uh, look here. But Thomas makes some good beer. Anyways, vote for a pecan or fried green tomatoes. That'll be our first state beer. We'll get that going. Uh, also, ask them some questions. We're kind of to the Q&A part of this. Yeah. So, Musty Ditch said, I would go for the grain giveaway. However, I'm in Vancouver North. I wonder how long it would take to get the grain shipped here. This could be fun. That's Vancouver's like an eight hour drive from here. So like, uh, I doubt the shipping would be that hard, but it's just, a, it's just I have no idea how to, international yeah, border. I, I don't have, I've, ha I've shipped one thing so far to Canada. And it wasn't as expensive as I thought, but it wasn't cheap. It's was like 20 bucks or something like that. Hey, uh, Musty, uh, join the Discord and message me on Discord. Yeah, we might be able to figure something out. And we can figure out something. I do think it'd be fun to incorporate you guys in like, you know, since we've got the whole homebrew supply store here, we've got access to ingredients. It'd be fun to incorporate oh. some of you guys in some stuff. Best adult dating. Ooh, what do you think that is? You think it's like, hey, we can have some, some, some adult time? same person <laughs> i know message reported so yeah guys if you want some 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 segs with some random internet people click that chat link <laughs> click on it accept that's the first time we've had one of those in a while <laughs> i know we've been pretty good at not getting uh not getting spam bots um all right, any other questions? If not, then we will start working on closing down. We'll probably close down in the next, like, I don't know, 10, 10 minutes or so like it's that. It's probably the earliest we've closed down in a while. Mm -hmm. um, at least it wasn't Michael James. Uh, oh, Daniel said pecan red ale. Pecan red ale, sounds good. <laughs> yeah, little Michael James comment. That's so we awesome. have had two. Um, um, I don't know if you know all the Michael James. Uh, oh, Daniel messaged Travis. Thank you, Daniel. Perfect. Not here for you. Perfect. Also hit the like button. Uh, I don't know how many likes we have. Yeah, if you haven't 14. liked, if you haven't liked the video yet, we only have 28 concurrent viewers, which uh, oh more yeah, of you watch, uh, but. hop dipping. Oh yeah, info on hop dipping. Yeah, so that will be something I'll have to research more for future things. Um, yeah, I don't, know, I don't know who it was that got me looking into that the last couple of weeks, but uh, uh, it's been a conversation on the Discord. Oh, it has yeah, gotcha. Like that's there's. I haven't read the full conversation, but there's like uh, Thule, um I think Patrick and a couple other, maybe a couple other people have been kind of talking about how they get the uh, the maximum thialization off of all that. Yep. And I have not used Capri yeast yet. No. As soon as we bought Capri yeast, uh, four eyed guys, Alex bought all of it from us. So, uh, so it, I'm pretty sure that beer is probably done by now. Yeah. I need to buy. I need to buy more. Yeah. I need to do another period. Uh, I'll ask Alex if I can get some of that beer so yeah. we can try it and see. Um, and 
and yeah, I know that there's some spam bot on the comment sections. I try to go back in at about five days later to try to clear all those out. Yeah. Um, it's all good though. If you know, if every once in a while you can find some some free online uh, internet hookups, then it's good. It's worth it, right? Would a spam sex bot beer taste like? Uh, water, and disappointment. <laughs> yeah, or like water-based lubricant. Yeah. Definitely disappointment as your life gets ruined. Probably. Um, all a beer of all the off flavors at once. Or just one really bad off flavor. Yeah. Which. Um. Yeah, uh, but yeah, no, the Capri Yeast, I've been interested in seeing how that turns out. KY Jelly Common. <laughs> I like that. A little bit of cluster hops. Well, I already got these things up there. Unlabeled orange beer that may or may not be drinkable. Definitely bottle conditioned. Yeah. But that's, so. That cleared up really nice. Whoever Agent Orange is... Let's find out. Butyric acid. <laughs> Butyric acid. Yeah, I can see it tasting like that. Butyric acid is like the ultimate disappointing beer off flavor, because it's the one that like is the most like I immediately feel like I should not be drinking this. Oh, I want to get it. Look at me being responsible with the bottle opener for Peter. If you try hard enough, you can open a beer with anything. Including your dick. It's true. Done it before. I've got scars to prove it. I mean, they didn't hurt at all. That's exactly what Lisa wants to hear. Exactly. Lisa's not a beer. That was a joke. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, I'm, I was going to say, now we're just kind of seeing what is the easiest way to close transfer. I'm troubleshooting, uh, with my analyst steel, anvil stainless steel from entering, keeping it closed and spun it to a two point. I don't know what the spun it 2.0 is, but the easiest way to close transfer is to have a T with a stopcock or some sort of a valve on one side of the T and uh, the other way is to have the, so if you have a T, you have spunding valve and then you've got some sort of a stop valve on the other part of the T, um, then you can easily just switch between having the, uh, the valved part uh, attached to CO2 and not, so. Yeah, um, and I know that, uh, again, since I called out a couple weeks ago, my buddy, the brew, the dude brew stew, um, which he poked his head in a little while ago, and he's actually going to bring us his uh, strawberry saison at some point in time, mm -hmm. which looks amazing. Um, I think that's just the pressure. Oh, that's an interesting. Uh, all on PRV. It's PRV spunning valve pressure fermentation. Oh, with the spike 2.0. Does that have a valve on the other side? Let's see. That's. Uh, what is this thing? Let me show people yeah. what I'm looking uh, but at. But he has a, I don't, he doesn't do spunning, but he shows how to close transfer with his stuff. So, on one of his videos. Window capture. All right, so that's the spun at 2.0. Um, let's take a quick look here. Patrick, I just have, I have a love-hate relationship for you right now. All in one PRV, Patrick. What's he saying? Thanksgiving leftovers. Will it be? Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. We need to do another will it beer, but we don't have the infrastructure. Our and will it beer videographers don't exist anymore. Yeah, and uh, he's now a, a professional brewer. Yeah, exactly. So, um, oh, if you're over in the Seattle uh, area, Good Brewing in Bothell, uh, go in and say that. Matt and Peter from Genus sent you there to harass Ryan. Yes. Um, oh, because he is the... <laughs> he's the brewerizer or something like that? Yeah, Reverend KY, we're making a jelly beer based off of you. 
Yep, Reverend KY. Also, welcoming Reverend. Reverend. I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> KY Jelly, what? So, I am wondering what the little thing on the side is. What the little downspout right there is. If that's something that you can attach CO2 with, the... with. Oh, it's got the. Yeah. It's got a thing on it. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, so you can click a. Click a ball lock gas port on it right there, and then you can pressure transfer into your other thing. The biggest thing with pressure transferring or completely closed transferring is making sure whatever you're transferring into has been purged with CO2. So if you're transferring into another vessel or a keg, for example, um, fill the keg with sanitizer, pump the sanitizer out with CO2, and then pump your beer in with CO2. That way, everything that, that touches it is uh, CO2 purged. And, uh, <clears throat> and Reverend, uh, our... Um, our buddy, uh, Ryan, uh, is now, uh, is the new head brewer of Good Brewing Co. Um, or at least that's what he posts on his social media. Yeah, and he's got a, um... His sweet uh, anime haircut still. And his Instagram handle is Genus Seattle. So go follow Genus Seattle, uh, and then, uh, spam him and say, Bah! That's my advice. Copy profile URL... Here we go. In the chats. Yeah, I'm going to the chats. Way to go, Ryan. Yeah. Ryan's awesome. We miss him. Yeah, it's, um, I know that uh, when I go to Seattle, he is, uh, I've already talked to him about just touring around some of the breweries with him. Yeah, that'd be uh, awesome. Because, yeah, that was before I started going pro and then he went pro after me, so. I love how he was hired originally just to do videos and social media. And then, then he learned all the things. And then he now is a professional brewer and really enjoys the beer culture and the scenes and stuff. Yeah. I know I'm behind. I'm a slow drinker. I don't know if I dislike this or like it. Uh, give me a moment to finish up this. Uh, he doesn't post much. Um, yeah, no. Well, especially now that he's busy. He's a head brewer. <laughs> hey, he's got a lot going on. His bird is adorable. Yeah, it is. I absolutely adore his bird. I want to meet his bird. Send us a send us a thing, and then we'll uh, print out the label. By the way. Um, even though he doesn't post that much, if you guys all spam him a bunch, like send him a bunch of comments and likes and stuff like that, then he'll be forced to. All in one. Versatility, safety. I need Spam. to figure out how to use a spunny valve. Spunny valves are fun. Can you grab a second glass for me for this new beer? Yeah. Since I'm being slow today. I was up way too late last night, not even drinking. <laughs> I was in bed hella early last night, but I also wake up super early, so. That means I have I was a up full at a, rest. I, I was up at a Peter time this morning and then went back to sleep. Which means I was up at 4.30. Nice. <laughs> Notice how I call that Peter time now. <laughs> yeah, I was up a half hour earlier than you. I've been up since 4. Mm -hmm. I started a new anime, though. Um, it's on Netflix. Is it on Netflix? Which yeah. An, which anime? Uh, I, it's the, the, the title was in Japanese, so I actually don't know what the title is. Um, but it's about a dude that... Uh, What's he called it? The, the reset or something like that? It's a dude that like goes back in time to when something tragic happens. Mm. And he's used to going back in time like three to five seconds. But all of a sudden, uh, he stops a girl from being kidnapped in the present. And then he goes back in time to his childhood when the same kidnapper kidnapped uh, and killed two of his classmates. I know which one you're talking about. Um... I was really digging it. It was good. Uh, erased. Erased? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or it's, yeah, it's, um. And, and Netflix it looks like the title's in Japanese. You wanna, if cool. you open it up, I can see. Yeah, that one. Yep. Erased. Uh, and it's uh, not just that, but it's um, uh, a chance to save his murdered classmates. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's, that, that mystery beer is interesting. It's not necessarily bad. I just don't, it's kind of bland. Yeah, I was like, nah, I don't really know. I was like, eh. It, it has almost no flavor. Um, and then That's whoever's here. grew it, this is. Um, it's got bog myrtle, mugwort, well, there we go. Uh, licorice root, and heather. That's how you pronounce it. 
Boku Dake Ga Inae Machi. Machi or Maki? Machi. Machi. You, you, it's a ch- very hard ch- in Boku Dake Ga Inae ina, Inai Machi. I should just take Japanese. I just need to like learn Japanese at some point in time. You need to learn German first. I should learn German as well. Hey, we got I, it correct. I, hey, nice. <laughs> well, when I say we, I mean you. Yeah, pretty much a master. <laughs> um, yeah, what have I been watching recently? He might have just been saying correct, like I should learn Japanese, correct? Oh. That's, that's... <laughs> correct, you should learn Japanese. That's true. Um, I, I haven't been watching much. I've been re- reading mostly web comics and stuff. Uh, mostly because I'm actually in the process of writing my own. Yeah. Oh, you, you did pronounce it correctly. Sweet. That, that, that's the nicest thing that someone said to Peter today. <laughs> and for the rest of my life. Um, All right. So what is this one? Move this back over. Uh, this one is a Gruit. Uh, what we're drinking right now is a Gruit from whoever puts blue painter's tape on their labels. Which used to be me, but it's not me anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love the nose. Yeah, it's good. It's got it's got some funkiness to it. It's got a little bit of like, um, like farty sulfur smell, which I'm like, eh, okay. But I kind of expect that in a Gruit. It's yeah. very sweet. It's got a lot going. It is on the sweet side. It's, it's not a, bad. It's almost like a honey was added to it. Yeah. I mean, the heather is going to give it a natural, like, bitterness to it, like, a natural, like, earthiness to it. Yeah. So. I get, by definitely being, like, almost like a honey note, like, they might use honey malt or something. Yeah. Overall, I like it. I think it's good. Yeah. I, that, that, that's an, I think overall, we've, I think this is actually one of the better, no offense to everyone, mostly because we let beer sit way too long, uh, but this is one of the better. Uh, for the record, it's 100% Matt's fault, not mine at all. I take zero responsibility. I, I will take. <laughs> I'll take. I will take 30% responsibility. Perfect. And then we'll blame the rest on Ryan. No, I'm gonna say well, no. I can't blame Warren because Warren's too nice. Yeah, Warren's too nice and too good at his job to blame him on anything. Ryan's good at his job too and nice. Uh, for a group pairing with turkey. Ooh. Group pairing with turkey is actually a good idea. Yeah. Especially if you buy the, build the right grit. Well, yeah, and like the turkey with stuffing, like that whole combo right there, because it's like it's a lot of muddled flavors, but grew it's like another lot of muddled flavors that all kind of it's like all the spices that would go in it anyway. So, yeah, that's smart. I'm putting it on the list. Hey, I need to buy more. I need to buy malts today. God damn it! Gosh damn it! Oh, is that a different one or the same one? I don't know. More porn, guys. Here's a chance. Don't miss out. Mm-hmm. Turkey. There we go. Yep, I just put them in timeout. Grew it. Uh, how, how was the festival yesterday? We did not go. I didn't go. Uh, it looked like Warren had a ton of fun. So, yesterday was the most convoluted beer festival day ever because there was in Cheney, which genus went to yep uh Cheney's first beer fest uh, and i know warren went and it looked like uh based off his pictures it looked like a lot of fun there um uh then uh we also had in millwood fresh hop fest which we did not go to and then there was also the yakima the big fresh hop fest and then there was also girl scout cookie pairings yesterday yeah so Yaya, they sent somebody to every single one of them. They, went, they did all of them. Yeah. And they had someone in the tap room. Yeah. They had people everywhere. We they can't actually had two people in the tap room, but that was because they were training their new person. GABF this weekend? Uh, yeah. G- we, 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 uh, Revan, we mentioned that at the beginning. Um, I know of one per- or two people at GABF. Our good friend Kevin Green, um, who is uh, a malt sales rep here in Spokane. He's now a man- manager, actually. He's manager. no longer a sales rep. Manager. But, um, regional manager. Regional manager. Super chill dude. Uh, and makes st- stupidly good beers. I actually want to bring in some of his beers so we can taste them again. Yeah, he needs to bring me all his beer because he makes really good beer. Um, some of the best hours in the area. Yeah. Um, and then also uh, Rachel, who was on one of the Willet Brew episodes. Yep. Uh, she is the head brewer. She is the owner of Community Pint, head brewer of... Golden uh, Handle. Golden Handle. And so she went down 
and actually was doing a lot of pink boot stuff beer this weekend. I've been following her Instagram stuff. Yeah. Um, so, and got me a lot of other female. Uh, uh, yeah, Reverend. Yes, yes. I I don't care. Yes. Yeah. I might be it. running a one day festival, a cider festival on the island next year. Want to come? Beers and meads are welcome, of course. Uh, absolutely. Um, and Patrick, yeah. Uh, I know that our our neighbors Bardic. When I say neighbors, they're like five blocks. But yeah. Um, they won best cider pairing. I don't know who won best beer pairing. I'm going to assume it's Black Label because they win every year. Probably. Girl Scout mm-hmm. Cookie Stout. Have you tried the Pink Boots Hot Blend from YCH? I'm guessing is what you meant. Um, not this year's. No, and that's actually one of the things I think that they were deciding on at GABF. Yeah. Um, I wish there was a better. Sorry, I'm I'm texting. I, I don't know a better way to a better way they they to market that than the Hot Blend. Like like the Hot Blend is. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not special or anything like that, and it's uh, also kind of expensive, and so I wish I could just make <laughs> make a beer with my own hops and yeah, yeah, my chief, yeah. Um, I know that I'm going to try to get convince Genus to do the. Did you guys do the ALS or ALS hop blend this year? Nope, we haven't done any of the hop blend stuff. Well, because the ALS or ALS I know is a free hop blend. You just have to donate the proceeds from the beer to ALS Research. Yeah. So that's actually not too bad. Yeah, that's uh, that's when we used to, so when Golden Handle was associated with Steel Barrel and all that and stuff like that, that's one that Golden Handle did quite a bit of. Yeah, and they still do. Um, that, that's a fun, that's, that's actually always a fun hot blend and to see different ones. And I know this year we actually had a beer fest for it up in, at Humble Abode. They hosted a beer fest yeah. where everyone brought their ALS beers because there's enough Spokane breweries that do it now. Yeah, I mean, I'm down to donate to those causes and everything like that, but it's just it's the the hot blend thing always weirds me out. I'm like, wow, why do we have to do the same hot blend? Like, why does it got to be like, I don't know. I guess it kind of makes sense, but I, at the same time, I just don't understand it. But you could do a weird beer with it. I could, hot blend lobster beer. Actually, yep, that's <laughs> <laughs> most of the proceeds will come from me. That's right, <laughs> all the lobsters. I, I think I am the one that drinks the most lobster beer here. Uh, we've got some. We've got some lobster beer fans. We got some people that, that down it when we have it. Well, I was gonna say I usually usually have. Well, the last one I could only have a pint at a time, but previous ones yeah. I was usually two, a pint and a half every time I came in. I think next time we do it, I gotta go back to the. Uh, I gotta go back to the the sushi style where I, you know, I I made it like a kettle soured and made it like sushi. Yeah, that seemed to go pretty well. Um, well, I think that's what we're gonna say for Maine. I know we're gonna do that for I think Maine lobster. Maine lobster. Um, I'm, hey, Reverend, also, if you have any ideas for, um, uh, state beers, uh, also, Reverend, uh, for Alabama, do you want to see us, uh, do a pecan-based beer that's not a porter? Non, a pecan non-porter beer. It'd be a pecan cream ale or something like that. We're a pecan um, Kentucky common. Or, no, because... We, pecan KY Kentucky... <laughs> <laughs> uh, or do we want to see us do a fried green tomato beer? Yeah. Because we need votes. Um, which hop fundraisers are better? Um, the amount per hops bought versus the dollar each pint? I think it depends on nonprofit, but I like the idea of per pint best overall. The per pint is definitely what, what I mean, that's the, the pint sales are definitely what make the money. It's the, the, that's why I think the hop blend part is like a little bit just weird in my mind because at volume, it just doesn't scale to the amount of donations that you want. The keg sales and the pint sales do scale, and so, yeah, the, that's why the hot blend. I think of things about things from the back end, like uh, you know how it works on down the supply chain, and the the hot blend part is like the minimal, tiny tiny part, but it's the one that gets the biggest focus because it's the thing that everybody has to use. Um, I think veterans per pounds are yeah the veterans blend, pecan sexy jelly saison porter. <laughs> Uh, and Musty, uh, if you go ahead, you can also message me on Bear Puncher uh, <coughs> Brews on Instagram, if that works better as well. Um, but either the email or messaging me on Instagram. Uh, and I just posted what it is. But um, those, uh, I also am very good at responding to my Instagram as 
uh, Nocturne Brewer, Rev, I think, Rev, I don't know if me and Revan follow each other on Instagram. I know Adam and me do, me and Jimmy do, well, me and Jimmy just talk in general because I have drinking way too much beer with Jimmy. That happens. And not enough beer at the same time. <laughs> not yet. Um, all right, well, it sounds like we're getting kind of but, uh, close to the end here. Yeah, I don't know what's the best way to go about the hot fundraisers, honestly. It's... Uh -oh. yeah. I don't know what just happened. Nope, we're watching live again. Um, so we're going to go ahead and close, start closing this out. Um, like, subscribe, comment, do all that stuff. And if uh, we'll you've got any more questions, then send them to us on Facebook or Instagram and we will uh, we'll see you guys next time or discord or discord if that works discord link is above in the chat maybe and we'll see you guys next time oh my god Stefan Stoudemire <laughs> woo